Hey everyone, I'm Mahi Megan. Welcome to my speed paint. Today I am going to be drawing my OC peanut cheddar cookie. Although this video is unscripted, I do have some notes over on the side so I don't completely go Thrillville off the rails. There will be three parts of this video. There's going to be the first part where I do some sort of art explanation, I talk in depth about the features that I use in Clip Studio in order to make this piece what it was, then I'm going to talk a little bit about my character herself, and then I'm going to talk about my YouTube channel. So if you're only here for this one video and you don't plan on like subscribing to me or whatever, you can just mute the tab when I get to that part. Okay, so first we go in and talk about my art process. So the process of this piece in particular, I don't know if I can call it a piece, it's kind of like low effort, it's just, a, it's just a character PNG, is I first sketched it out on paper because personally I still really enjoy sketching on paper even if it's not as easily manipulatable as a digital sketch. I just like the tactile feel I suppose. I. I just always feel as though like when I sketch on paper, it just turns out better. It's something in the back of my mind tells me that. It might not be true, it might be true, not sure which is right. So I did that and then I used the transform tools here in Clip Studio in order to manipulate it a bit to look more close to cookie run proportions. They're not exact, but they're in the general ballpark, ballpark, ballpark I would say. So I manipulated that off camera and then that made it so that I could go right away into the line art phase because Cookie Run just has like pretty solid colors, just like solid untextured brush strokes for at least the oven break sort of style that I was going for here. I did everything with like the default round brush. It's probably called G-Pen or Turnip Pen. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is or if there's any. I might end up alternating between the two during this video. I'm not sure because G-Pen and Turnip Pen are so similar to me that I can just use Turnip Pen as a duplicate of G-Pen and like change the stabilization if I want so I can have one that's really stabilized and one that's not stabilized. You get the drift. I just like using all the things that have been given to me. And what you're going to see as I draw my line art is you're going to see that I am doing it on these layers with these little, this little like black and white little stamp next to them, which represents a vector layer. I do all my line art in vector layers for multiple reasons. The first of these reasons is that I can control the line thickness. After I've drawn the line without having to redraw it from the very start, this is useful for me because I can never, I never quite understand pen pressure settings. I just don't, I can never coordinate them to like truly work fully for me. So I use this in post to give my lines more varying weight because I do, I do have like lighter pressure and heavier pressure, but it always comes out really uniform, so I really appreciate the line thickness changing of vector layers. Secondly, you can erase at intersections really easily. It's a lot quicker because if you're not, if you're using a traditional raster layer, as normal layers are called, and you have two lines that intersect, you have to manually go in and erase them at the edges of that intersection. But with vector lines, you can just do one little stroke and it will know where to cut it off, which is great. It speeds up things, saves a lot of time. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Kissy sounds, if you were not able to discern that from my voice just now. And finally, the last thing I use vector layers for is you can, this is the biggest one, you can transform them without any loss of quality. So if you transform a normal raster layer, you're going to see me do it here with the eyes, technically like the blue part of her eyes I think is a raster layer, but I just let it be because it's, it's such a minor quality difference. But with vector layers, you can make them as big as you want, you can transform them as much as you want, and they're still going to be that crisp, clean, high quality and I adore that because I am, not only am I very indecisive, I am also a perfectionist at heart. So 
That is all the more reason to use vector layers for me. And once I finish up the lineup, the... Not the lineup, excuse me, the line art here, you're going to see me start to move into the coloring process, which I just use the fill bucket tool. Clip Studio, Clip Studio has a really nice fill bucket tool where you can use this feature called, what's it called? I wrote it down over here. It is area scaling. And what area scaling does is it makes it so that your fill is a little bit bigger than what you're actually choosing to fill. So if you have your line art layers on top of your filling layers, your fill will go a bit underneath the line art. So there's no like little white line against the line art. You can make it up to like 20 pixels big bigger, which is good if you're using like a textured brush and then it like doesn't get underneath all the texture. You can use area scaling to kind of mitigate that. And also when I'm filling things, you'll see that I have this little lighthouse icon next to the line art layer and what that does is it sets it as a reference layer and then I can go in the fill bucket tool settings over here and make it so that my fill tool is referencing the line art layer even though I don't have my colors on the same layer as the line art. And one last thing for the methodology of my art section here is you're going to see me use things called clipping layers a lot. And what a clipping layer does is it only shows up, like whatever changes you make only show up on the lines of the layer beneath it. So say I wanted to change the color of the line art, I could make a new layer, fill the entire canvas in with pink, and then my whole art would just be this big pink square. But then if I made it a clipping layer, I could make it so that the only the the only parts of the pink that would show would be the parts of the line art layer. And that's basically all the tools I used for this drawing here. That might not have made a lot of sense if you're not a digital artist, but I do hope that you were able to learn something, perhaps. And next we go on to, excuse me, my character herself. This is Peanut Shutter Cookie. It's a pun on peanut butter and then like the shutter of a camera because you know they go click click peanut butter peanut shutter but um tss. I hope I hope it's I hope it's obvious enough I tried to make it obvious and peanut shutter is just there's this meme the Daniel and the cooler Daniel peanut shutter is the cooler YouTube user Mahi Megan she's me with a lot less social anxiety, she's more composed, she's more funny, more witty, less of, oh, I have to write my scripts in order to be witty, and more of just funny on the fly. And you'll see me draw her camera here. I think I accidentally cut out a portion where I was drawing her camera, but it wasn't that interesting anyway. You'll see me just... You might have seen by now like a cut or two in the footage and that's because I love to go on Discord and I don't want to accidentally dox anyone or show anyone if they like didn't want to be shown on the internet. So if you see a random jump, it's because it's Discord. And that's basically my whole OC, she's just me but cooler and instead of me who's like getting cookie run footage off my phone since she lives in the cookie run universe, she's taking live footage with her camera. She is... Assuming she's a kingdom character, I'd make her a middle bomber because middle bomber just happens to sound a lot like my real life name. Don't dox me please, but it just sounds a lot like my real life name, so it has the same sort of cadence, the same sort of rhythm. And another thing... Going back to the methodology part that I forgot to mention earlier, this little square here with the little cookie run PNGs that I forgot to mention earlier, that's not a Clip Studio feature. That is an application called Pure Ref. I cannot recommend Pure Ref enough. You can just take images from your files and just drag them on in there and then resize them and then move them in this big like infinitely sized canvas and you can have it so the pure f window always stays on top i love it great stuff it's so great for referencing because if you notice in clip studio you can only have one reference image open at a time and you can tab through them 
but again, you can only see one at a time. And traditionally, in the past, I would like make these dedicated images to use for referencing, but it's just so much easier to do in Pure Rep. So if you are an artist, I definitely recommend going and downloading it. It is free, but they are going to ask you for a tip. You don't have to, but honestly, if you can spare a dollar or two towards their development, I totally would do it. And finally, we have the part where I talk about my channel. So recently on my channel, I held a poll about whether I should stick purely to cookie run stuff or if I could talk about other fandoms without people getting mad, and most people seem to agree that they would be fine with me talking about other franchises, which is great because as much as I do love cookie run, I do think that I'm gonna get bored of it eventually, not anytime soon, but just I'm going to run out of video ideas eventually, but I have lots of things to say about other franchises, particularly Danganronpa, because I had a five year uninterrupted interest in it, but I have things to say about other series, other franchises I would love to analyze and work with and talk about. So I will primarily be a Cookie Run channel right now, but you might just see the odd one-off Danganronpa video here and my interests might change as I grow and develop and I was thinking of making this change now before I hit any like big milestones like 1000 subscribers because once I was sort of if I got into that niche where people only knew me for cookie run and then I suddenly uploaded a different video I might just like stagnate and I would in the future I would love to have YouTube as like a second revenue stream in addition to a job because I don't know if you know this but I'm graduating college and I'm going to need to make money soon in order to sustain myself so if I can get all the little dweebs on YouTube to hit that subscribe button perhaps I can sustain myself in a way where I can eventually quit a 9 to 5 job and I can just make silly little videos about my Blorbos on YouTube.com. That's the dream. Might not happen. Trying to be realistic. But if it does happen, I will totally go for it. I will be up and at them. I will be making those videos. I will be the funniest person on the planet Earth. If you are willing to pay me. Maybe I'll do like donations in the future or something. Not right now, I don't have enough people who care about me to do that sort of thing yet. Maybe in the future. Um, another thing for the future is I want to get a good, like, fancy PC. Because right now, all my Cookie Run footage, I'm recording it on my phone and then sending it to my PC. If you see someone like Syrupy, who has like that nice, crisp 1080p footage, I tried to do that. Um, my computer she's she's not powerful enough she's a little laptop that's like five or six years old she's she's pretty she's pretty dang good but she's not like that good i need like a super duper graphics card in order to handle like streaming or even just recording cookie run on my computer without it stuttering and lagging but essentially that's all there is to it that's all there is to my plans that's all there is to peanut shutter that's all there is to this art. I do hope you enjoyed it or got something out of it. And if you just had me muted the whole time, I know you can't hear me right now, but I hope the music you chose to play over me was swanky as hell. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Mahi Megan out.